Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 105. You said zero last time. Now it's messed me up. 105. It's not zero. It actually is zero, though. Like, I think, like, mathematically. But it sounds better 105. Should we say 105, guys? Leave it in the comments you down mean below. You mean O isn't a number? Well, some people say it like a number. I just feel like 105. It sounds like you're a robot. My brain wants to say um, 205. Because like I, oh, I joked God, that it's, no, we're not there I, yet. But it's because my like we joked that it's season two. Oh, season two, episode five. I like that, guys. I'm sorry. I naturally I haven't slept that much, and we've just had a long week. But oh my God, you guys, the Hello? fucking GoFundMe. You're insane. If any of you donated and it was money that you could not donate, I am mad at you. But otherwise, thank you so much. First of all. Big fuck up on our part. Oopsie, you can't donate a dollar and GoFundMe. I did GoFundMe. a pinned comment after a while when I realized it's, we didn't make the GoFundMe. I got the domain and I did the graphics, but then Becca's the organizer. So she got the actual stuff done and we've never GoFunded. I've GoFunded donated, but I have never donated, like I've never tried to donate a dollar. And so I didn't know that you couldn't, like why not a dollar? I don't get it. It seems weird because we swear, we didn't choose the minimum. GoFundMe has a $5 no. minimum. We would have done it. We would have done 25 cents, honestly. Literally. Well, I would have done zero as a minimum. I mean, well, that, I mean, that wouldn't make any wouldn't, sense. Yeah. <laughs> So we posted our last episode at like two in the morning, my time, Eastern time. And when I tell you that by the time I woke up, we were almost at our goal. It was around already. 10 a or 10 p.m. my time when we posted. And then I may have stayed up the whole night. It was just so exciting. And I kept watching it and I just kept <laughs> refreshing. And I was like, oh my One God. One thing about Lily is she's going to be up. Sometimes I've tried to work it out in my head. I'm like, okay, so you're up when I'm up. But you're also up when I'm not up. So when do you sleep? It's kind of like I, I sometimes I, I do like a almost two days awake, then one full day asleep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Wait, but do you, are you like naturally a cat napper or something? Uh, yeah. Do you just do little tiny naps, like flash naps? Because, you know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm nervous to go to sleep because then I'm not going to wake up. If I go to sleep yep. for like longer than three hours, then it's I'm done for. I'll be passed out for nine hours. But if I take like a nap for an hour, then I'm usually can pop back up and be like a little groggy and figure it out. Mm. But honestly, I've been running on so much adrenaline during all of this shit. Yeah, this has been honestly terrifying. I didn't want anyone to feel obligated. Asking for help is enough to make me want to die personally. Personally, like I have in my life when I face struggles and stuff like to ask for help is just it's a nightmare. Like it, it feels like this defeat. And I know it's not like I get the whole thing, but it just it feels that way for me. So when it finally got reached and I mean, finally, I say finally, but it was like <laughs> literally, like in literally 10 woke hours. Up and it was there. <laughs> well, what's funny is that we posted our video at night and Becca and Kitty were going to post about it the next day. Yeah. So they didn't even post before it, got, it hit the goal. The girlies were like ravenous. You guys were ravenous for justice. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Hi there. Sorry to interrupt, but uh, we have some messages from the two other girlies of the girlies versus is Janet and they just wanted to express their gratitude to you girlies. Say girlies one more time, Lily. Oh my god, I, I hate myself. Jesse, this is all your fault. Anyway, here's some messages from Kitty and Becca. Holy whack-a-mole? Okay. 12 hours? Because I'm not the best at expressing like gratitude because it doesn't like process properly for me. Instead, I will express absolute disgust. How dare you? How dare you guys do this to us and help us out so much in such a short amount of time? When we were first trying to figure out what to do, you know, we're looking at at least we got to figure out if we can raise the funds for our retainer because a fight is a fight, but a fight is expensive and we don't know how far and what kind of fight we might be able to do. And so this would help us strategize because we get to see what the response is, how you guys feel about it. And um, apparently y'all said, war i saw a lot of uh, other attorneys and commenters saying that like this seemed like a really low gofundme uh for potentially a major legal battle and it's because we needed to know if we would even be able to have the backing to go for a legal battle and what kind of legal battle we might really need to pursue and y'all said not only do you have our backs you have our entire spinal cords like the east coast hadn't even woken up yet that is insane you didn't even give them a chance west coast you did not give east coast even a chance to to try to represent but that's a-okay and again if you are not in a good place we never want anyone to donate we want you to take care of you first foremost and always like treat yourself before you treat anybody else and y'all said we are treating you and we are making sure that you you are safe and you can handle this. And you know, I've been watching the podcast since they started covering me because people are like, oh, you're appearing on the on the tube verse, you know, you're crossing the streams as it were. And that was where I saw and I saw everyone's comments and the support and the disgust at the wellness chicks and 
all that jazz, and that was already support I never thought I'd get. I'm pretty used to being a silo, so seeing other people really come forward and support that are entirely different audiences, who also said blood and organs, that literally just seems like this is the girl's shtick. She does not seem like she's all over the place. I mean, I know, but it's also really good, and I know it grinds gears for the other side to see the masses who also don't know me still agreeing that like, yeah, I'm not a flying purple people eater. I was fully expecting to have to deal with Janet and Lauren completely on my own. And so while I am not thrilled that anyone else got dragged into this, there is no team I'd rather be on than Jesse and Lily's, than the Do We Know Them podcast and having Becca Day in our corner as well. And having their audiences, you're rational people, you understand that this cannot be a precedent socially or legally for larger creators to copyright strike people into silence and when that doesn't work for them to come after them to try to give them a slap style wall suit to drain their funds and make them anxious and upset them and <laughs> during the holiday season and all that jazz. In my opinion, metaphorically speaking, for a while creators like these and this type of situation has come across as a game of legal chicken and they ran into the foxes in the hen house. We can't do much except express this extreme amount of gratitude that we all have to you, the girlies community, for showing up so hard and so fast and not really even giving my or Becca's community much of a chance uh, to, to get that that ball rolling to get that goal met so that we knew that I mean hell if we can do this in 12 hours then if it becomes some obscene drawn out ordeal we will have the support that it's not going to absolutely financially destroy us to fight the fight we need to do because we have the community support and hopefully we have a way beyond just this fight to really make it back up to you guys i i know my memes may not be worth much but i promise they are they are premium when i can release them i hope that that it's just like a little cherry on top. My ghasts flabbered, my gogs aghast. But truly, thank you guys all. <laughs> it's obscene, the amount of support we're seeing. Hello, sweet friends. Um, I just wanted to take a second and thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. And I know I can speak for all of the girls when I say this, we are blown away and we are humbled and we are grateful beyond our wildest dreams like you guys have taken so much stress and weight off of us by quite literally removing the burden of financial stress for us in the time being and we can't thank you enough you guys have given us the gift of being able to retain and hire an excellent team of lawyers we cannot thank you enough when we realized that we had hit our goal in less than 24 hours, it really sparked that fire in our bellies even more so. And it really made us see that the internet is here and they have our backs and we're ready to go fight the good fight. Oh, also, you guys have been very vocal that you love the mugshots. Thank you. I worked hard on them. Except mine. That was all natural. Wait, can we talk about that? Because a few people were yeah. like, oh my God, when did you guys have time for a photo shoot? And I was like, well, oh. if you scroll back to November of 2020, you'll see mine looks awfully familiar. When is yours from? Girl, I think 2017. I had blonde hair. Because it started like as kind of a joke. Is someone, I think Kitty or someone mentioned we should have mugshots up. And I was like, yep. well, I mean, I have one from not too long ago. It was like a joke one. And I then I to... knew I had one from, I think it's like Madame Toussaint's. Honestly, most people do. And then Kitty and um, Becca didn't. Becca had just like a picture that would work. And I like had different hands that I photoshopped. <laughs> and then Kitty was like holding a frame. So then I just photoshopped all the slates to be different. But I was doing all the names. And I think, I don't know if you were sleeping or just busy, but you weren't really participating in the convo when we were brainstorming <laughs> our names or like our, our crimes. Sounds about right. I was probably playing Fortnite. Well, so then <laughs> we were all like, okay, mine's gonna be this. Mine's gonna be this. And then we we're like, should Jesse's just stay <laughs> bootylicious? <laughs> I literally, okay. So I knew I had a mug shot and I went on my Instagram and I scroll back. And when I saw it, I was like, oh fuck, it says bootylicious. Why the fuck did I even pick that up? Like, I was like, what? And our group chat is on and popping, honestly. So sometimes I just, I miss chunks. Guys, would I tell it. you, there is not more than an hour a day where it's not actively going off. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of thoughts. It's We're a really fun group chat. I, I really enjoy it. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't see that. And so, you know, I, I missed the bus on that one. And I'm just forever known as Bootylicious. <laughs> We made the decision for it. Kitty was really campaigning for that. She's like, I think we should just leave her as Bootylicious. I think it's funny. And I was like, you know, it is. I love it that is. most people didn't even be like, why is Jesse Boot? Everyone was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Why has literally <laughs> they're not, I've seen maybe one person comment on it. Oh my God. My favorite was Kitty's that said demonic and on Reddit. Okay, that was another so funny thing 
ago, I had posted, I was, I've been really active on Twitter. If you don't follow me, check it out. But I posted like the group, like the one where I put all four of us on there. But then I also posted yeah. one that had like four separate individuals of us. And the thumbnails of them on my computer were really small. So I couldn't really see what they said. And I just grabbed the one I thought was the most recent I had made of Kitty. But Kitty had some variations that I had made. So I uploaded one that was um her previous title, which was Organ Harvester. <laughs> That was also a good contender, honestly. It was gonna be that until like kind of last minute and we decided to switch it up and I had uploaded that one and someone commented and they were like, I thought that hers said on Reddit, I was like, oh. We had, we had options. <laughs> Not everyone asking us to put it on a t-shirt. That was I'm what like, I was oh getting God. at. Yeah, that you guys really want merch and I think we're we're looking into it. We're probably gonna do it. Honestly, what this has done, so I know that our goal was 20,000. We actually surpassed that goal as of right now. I don't even know where that's going. I'm very nervous and stressed. It's insane, but full transparency, what that has allowed is a lot of security in our legal pursuits in this matter because we were just hoping to survive it, yeah. kind of. Like it we're was just like, like bare okay, like, yeah, we're gonna go to federal court we need representation and there's four of us so 20,000 but honestly this has allowed us to hopefully maybe even have some options to pursue justice in this situation and to set a precedence that people like Lauren the Mortician and Jeanette Braun are not to do this to other creators just because they don't like us Correct. or they don't like what we're saying and again there's been some people random people very few people who have been like well you guys talk shit on the internet look what happened to you and I'm like yeah, the point is you're allowed to talk shit on the internet. I, that's literally, uh, what like, am I missing? If you're siding with Janet on this, then so, you need to reevaluate. Can't help you, your, buddy. Yeah, I'm like, I don't <laughs> care if you don't like us. Like, even people that don't like us understand that we are in the right here. I'm not trying to ruin anyone's life. I'm not trying to hurt anyone. Like, I'm really not. What it is is like, hey. You can't do this. In my opinion, you knew going into this that this was a frivolous, baseless lawsuit. Like, you can't do that. That's not something that's acceptable, especially not in this community. Like, you're telling the girlies that they can't talk. We love to talk. What are you trying and to do? So it's apparently not too acceptable or agreed upon in the lawyer community. Because even the lawyers that have no clue, they're like, Every they've lawyer. never even heard our names before. They like, go into it like, I don't know who any of these people are. And the like first line, they're like, Oh, what? Well, because it is like, I it mean, says Laura the mortician in it. It does. He misspelled his own client. Oh my God. You know what's so funny is that they put in the lawsuit, you know, Jessica Vasquez has been a victim of a crime because of that. We don't want to say what state she's in. Bitch, I literally have a video called I moved to Georgia. Like, are you like, yeah, have you done research? That's funny, actually. But I just think it's hilarious that they're acting like they have so much like consideration because they don't want to dox me. you. And they're like, but her name's Jessica Vasquez. <laughs> And you could probably find her around this area. <laughs> Honestly, it's just been a wild turn. Me, Kitty, Becca, Lily, all of us have just been in awe. We were like speechless and that's rare for us. <laughs> it really is. That's what got us into this pickle, isn't it? But yeah, it just has been this overwhelming sense of like, extreme gratitude. This is one of the craziest times of the year. Christmas just passed, Hanukkah just passed. People have been spending money, being with family. I mean, not to mention that just financially, it's one of the hardest times as an American that I've experienced in my lifetime. I just am in awe. Like literally someone donated $500 and I put in the group chat, I'm like, they meant 50 and they probably fucked it up. We could, I, we'll move on to our topics. Sorry guys. They like the tangents. <laughs> so we have two topics, main topics. We have Alex Earl because interesting things. <laughs> I told my husband what it was right before I came up and he was, he was like, just horrified because it's like, you know, other people can go to their like significant other. What are you going to do at work today, babe? And it's like, oh, you know, <laughs> got to crunch those numbers. It's like, oh, girly, you don't want to know what I got to talk about today. That's literally anyone that ever is like, oh, how's work? I'm like, do you want to, do you really want to know? Christmas, they're like, how's work? How's the internet? I'm like, well, we're being sued. <laughs> <laughs> literally same. Wait, but before we move on to Alex Earl, I do want to share a quick text message from my father this morning to the family chat. Oh, do it in his accent. Oh, okay. Well, let me gear up. Okay. This was at 9.39 in the morning. As you may know, Jesse Smiles is being sued. Please contribute all you can, including life savings, so Miss Smiles can stay on the podcast. Thanks. <laughs> This is to who? My entire family chat. <laughs> Which is like, how many people? This is like cousins and... No, 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 no. Not that little. It's uh, like my sister-in-laws so that I can see like nieces, nephews, you know, all of us. My mom has said some funny... My mom is really like inadvertently funny. <laughs> she is. She's such a comedy She really queen. is not trying and she's really sass. I get... That's where I get it. I, and she's not an Aries. Well, but my favorite part is that your mom didn't quite understand that we were actually being sued and then she was completely shocked. Like... She lost weeks. her shit. It was literally like a couple days ago because I sent her the mug shots after I did them and she was like, 
wait. She's like, do you have a lawyer? Do you know how much lawyers cost? I'm like, yeah, hence the, the mugshot. The go <laughs> That's what we're doing, the GoFundMe. <laughs> oh my God, our parents are such boomers. But yeah, even the family chat is on and popping with this. So anyway, thank you. We'll move on now. Sorry, I, I apologize. Okay, so do you want to start with Alex Earl or Tana Mojo? Both are very interesting. Uh, well, Tana, because then we'll have the story times after the Alex one. Okay, so I know we just came off of one tangent, but we might have another tangent right before we get into Tana because we did speak about Tana recently. And boy, did that lead to some interesting comments. Honestly, I've been kind of busy the last few days, so I haven't checked the comments again. But the day that that episode came out, I opened it up and I saw like probably at least five, like pretty right off the bat that were mad at us saying, you guys are way too like lenient with Tana. You defend her so much, blah, blah. And I'm like, I was shocked. Did I was when shocked. Did, I was flabbergasted. Did we defend her? This happens to me a lot. We get these comments and I'm like, I don't remember. Like, did I say that? She used to be screaming into the camera, being loud, being vulgar, being really intense. She's still vulgar and like, that's always going to be a part of her. But I think she's so much more subdued now. And this is a little bit more of an immature Tana that we kind of remember from when she was like 17 and filming. Exactly. I think that what we've seen and what a lot of people have like noticed over the last few years is that she has seemed a little more mature and that she does seem like she's kind of like realized that some of her behavior back in the day was too much. This very much feels like reverting back to just like, she has no filter. Just first thing that pops in her head, she's blurting out. And then I go watch and I'm like, no, no, we didn't say that even a little bit. It's interesting because that does prove that I mean, everything is up to interpretation. And I think that everyone interprets things differently. Everyone has a different perspective. But full disclosure, like I was telling Lily when we were seeing all those comments of like, you're way too nice to Tana. You give Tana like so much leeway and like are so easy on her. I mean, we have said once on this podcast that we have a soft spot for Tana. It's like, you know, whatever. In no way, shape, or form am, am I a fan of Tana Mojo. Like, I am not. I don't consume her content. I don't watch her podcasts. I don't watch her TikToks. I literally said in that episode that I was like, I mean, given I don't really watch Tana's content, but I think from what I have seen, like clips and stuff, Tana has always been known to like be a partier, but I don't feel like I've seen a lot. I mean, I don't watch a ton of her content anyway, but like, I don't think she's usually doing live stuff. And I don't usually see her being like, blacked out like she literally seems like she's blacked out people were saying that we were saying that she has matured that was the whole point why it was concerning though like is because literally. she was not being mature there and it was like old tana and we were like what happened but the whole mature thing i wasn't even saying it as like a way to give her grace it was like a fact it in my opinion thing. where it was just yeah. like she was very young when she started the internet she has matured a lot this felt like we took 20 steps back like what the fuck yeah and we mentioned that it was people that worked hard on this show that she shouldn't have ruined it she should have been more con like in no way shape or form do we think anything she did was okay it was more of it that it was embarrassing for her than and it was like a ruining of the show. But also I was like, what about my face watching any of those clips made it seem like I did not think that that was not a good look at all. Like it was just also that the reason it was concerning and why we expressed that is because again, it seemed like 20 steps back from where she's seemed to be when we have seen the small clips that we do watch. It's concerning because is something going on or like, is this a bigger problem than just like she accidentally got drunk? Because Absolutely, she yeah. doesn't seem to do that. And that's why it's a problem, which if we would bend too harsh on how she was acting, people would get mad and be like, well, she has an addiction to like, something is going on, she has a problem. And I don't really understand what we were supposed to say. Tana has made like multiple jokes about rehab and certain things. And she even made it in front of Trevi, which actually has had a lot of struggles with yeah. addiction and stuff, which I didn't think was the smartest choice or the funniest joke by any means. But for all I know, Tana may be struggling with something. I don't know that for yeah. a fact, but it's also not my place to speculate. It's my place to understand this one situation. Maybe if there's a pattern of behavior, we can commentate on that. But this very much seemed like, wait, what the fuck? Like, yeah, Tana exactly. goes out and does weird shit, but this particular thing was very strange. So now we have a little bit more context because she did like sit down with Brooke and addressed all of this on her podcast. So we're going to talk oh, about yeah. that in a second. I haven't seen it. But in no way, shape, or form, just so that it's known from this point forward, do I have any sort of like extra special place in my heart for Tana that I won't criticize her when she deserves criticism. Like I felt like we were, I just didn't want to be on there and be like, why would you be on stage right now doing that? It's like, okay, well, let's just take it back a second. Like, I don't know. No, it was more just like, 
what is she doing well that's my genuine reaction was pure cringe like i was just and i said it i said prep your butt cheeks i said that i said you better get them clenched because this is gonna be cringy as fuck because she was cringy as fuck she was embarrassing i don't know but yeah we were kind of befuddled with that and there was multiple people who thought that so if you still feel that way even when we're talking about this let us know why like genuinely this is a conversation. We're not like Yeah, I just don't off. understand what the what they wanted the take to be. I don't know if also like we did kind of I know uh, at least I was trying to kind of like put myself in a situation where I could kind of be like, well, I mean, I've gotten really drunk before. Like, and you were saying like, I've had verbal diarrhea before. But even then (laughs) we were like, but we've never done that. Like we were trying to like understand why it happened because it again, seemed like not a normal occurrence. There are certain topics that we've covered on this podcast that when we are kind of trying to explore and like question things, people will take that as us defending someone. But it really like full disclosure. It's not. I think that's honestly the whole Deaf Noodles era and just different eras that we've had is the reason why we have kind of made a switch and we won't be so quick to kind of like ridicule up front. We will try to like explore more and that could be seen as maybe passiveness. I don't know, but it's not that. It's just that we don't want to be like, bitches to everyone we're trying to learn and grow okay we're trying to remember that this is not a facetime call this is a a show that well and also like depending on the context of it like again this seemed like a strange out of the norm behavior for current tana if this was something she was doing every week i'm sure we would have been a lot harsher i don't even think we would have covered it probably not honestly yeah but i think of like even like how we talked about like uh our good friend the influencer uh, the video blogger in the small town. Oh my gosh. We were yeah. a bit harsh with her. Yeah, well, that is because I have seen so many fucking videos of her doing the same exact thing. And it was like, we get it. You want the attention and you're doing this for attention and something is going on. Mm-hmm. Tana, it didn't seem like it was for attention. It seemed it seemed like out of the ordinary. It seemed almost. weird. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But she finally addressed it. So we're going to watch it and then we'll we'll talk about it. Thought I was going to make it the whole year. I'm very sorry for my horrible hosting skills Debacle. at the Steamies. Let's unpack it a bit. I just want to say Let's. first and foremost, I came on here after the Streamies and I said, no more award shows. I've made Paige take videos of me after every award show I've done and be like, record me telling future me to never do this again because you never want to feel like this again. Like, yeah, and it's I just have to accept that I don't think it's something I'll ever fucking be good at no matter what. I don't know what it is. I just like get so nervous and I it is nerve wracking. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to be said. It's so frustrating when the whole world is just talking about you like they know you. And I think yesterday I just had like a super mental breakdown. I haven't trended on Twitter with people you were trending my dms were flooded mm-hmm. like girl get tana yeah <laughs> and yeah you should have got me and ripped me off that fucking stage i was gonna be there but it wasn't yeah, i was sure to just help me sit. i, I would have done something different i would have pulled you by your hair off that stage i'm telling you i love everyone Why can I actually like that was there and i really <laughs> wanted to do it and try something new but i also think it's just like i've been doing this shit for 10 years i know what i'm good at i know what i'm not good at i need to stop saying i was so nervous and before we do like any canceled show or anything i'm gonna take it like a shot or two and i took two shots before the fucking thing and one shot on stage but clearly have a little more to eat maybe i don't even know <laughs> like i understand why everyone so, thinks yeah, I sometimes was like, two shots goes further than a, a normal two shots or yeah. maybe perhaps they're thinking like, oh, I'm going to. What was that? Wait, Lily, thoughts? What was Brooke just said? Or perhaps. Yeah, didn't it seem like she was insinuating she was doing something else? Honestly, and I didn't say it the last time because I wasn't trying to speculate. And I'm not even trying to speculate, I guess, now. But I I think there's very likely, and she might be prescribed it for just actual anxiety if she took Xanax before. Because if you take Xanax and you drink, it's like, depending on how much you take, it can more than double. But it'll like essentially at least double your alcohol intake. I do think some people maybe mix it. I mean, I don't know if this was the case. And I don't even know if she was on it. But like, if you do take it regularly, maybe she even like forgot that she took it or like she took right. an extra one and didn't. Like, and that mix is. Exactly. Like, because two shots, I don't know how much Tana drinks these days. But like, I think I could take two shots and I would not be that drunk. And I don't even drink hard alcohol. I don't anymore. think I'd be well, but I, yeah, I think I'd be fine you'd enough be to like not You'd be like the like that. hot face, like flushed in a little flustered, but I don't think you'd be like slurring your, like the slur was a, a bit reminiscent. I've, 
I've seen a lot of. You're like I may have experienced. Yes, something I, I've similar witnessed to that, that firsthand, and it did reflect um, what I've seen in the past. But also, just Brooke saying that caught me off guard because yeah. it seemed like she was about to. Same, but she doesn't elaborate. She just kind of hints at it, is like, well, maybe it was something. It else. It seems like but... she's kind of just biting her tongue this whole time, thinking like, oh, I'm gonna wear this I Heart Trisha Paytas shirt, and everyone's gonna think it's funny. Damn near got booed off the stage. Like, yeah, you know, she did. like it just I don't I can't get behind that one. I'm we gonna, do love Trisha Paytas. Everyone who watches Cancelled also knows exactly where I stand with the James Charles of it all. We're not close, we're not besties. Like I've just become civil with him. I've said it a thousand times, like we're just cool. If I see him now, not really. No, we don't know. That's not, maybe not the take. We don't become civil with James Charles, and that is just like a standard human practice that we should all practice if you want to like be nice to him if you see him sure but it's the promoting him and acting like that that like i'm not gonna say I'm it's sorry i don't even get that because it's... i have been to so many events where there's people that i don't like and then it's just like this even if you have to interact with them it's just like this hi and then you move on that is standard influencer 101 you learned that the first day in class not in her defense because i'm not defending it but they Just were flavor. actually friends. It's not like they were acquaintances that like can avoid, you know? So I, I get that there would be some awkward tension, I guess, but I don't know. I guess I've been friends with too many people. I'm like, I have also been enemies with people that I've been friends with. And it's like, you see them in person, you're like, top of the morning to you, motherfucker. Like, yeah, I guess never. I don't have too many experiences. I don't run into Christy Carlson Romano out. You're very friendly with everyone. Lily will get along with a rock That's if cool. you let her. But I just am not the same. So I have had that, like, you know, that nod of like, yeah, thank you. And then you just move on. You don't have to announce that. Just because you're not punching someone square in the face, which nobody's asking you to do, doesn't mean that you have to announce to everyone, like, don't leave anger in your heart. There's like, a big you difference be between saying hi and being civil if you see someone out and like talking about them openly at an award show in front of all these people. Why are you even bringing him up? Like, I get that the topic was about him, but... Yeah, and one thing, I'm not defending Tana. I am just analyzing the situation. One thing that I can actually respect is that she recognizes she's not good at it. Like, the Steamies was a hot mess. We showed that. The Streamies was a hot mess. We showed that. And there was just, like, a lot of examples of her just, like, if you look at her in the Streamies, for instance, she did a horrible yeah. job. And, like, I do respect that she gets that she's not good at it. A lot of influencers do not respect what they're bad at. I, um, respect that she recognizes it, but, like, for example, Clever had Clever TV and Clever News, so they did do entertainment news. I ended up getting my following from not doing the entertainment news because I did the personality stuff where we just were stupid. But there were opportunities once I did have a following because I was in the same realm as the clever entertainment news, I would get these opportunities presented where it was kind of like people knew Jocelyn interviewed people. So then they saw me and Jocelyn do stuff together and they kind of just like assumed that like, oh, well, they can do it too. I mean, I don't think I like tank it. Like it's not like, oh God, why did we use her? But like, for example, the pretty much only red carpet I've ever done. I'm gonna have to see footage, just so you know. No. We, um, <laughs> we get asked, the two of us, Jocelyn, who had been doing this for literally like over a decade and is like this absolute master at it, can talk to anyone, is so charismatic and great at just being on the fly. And I can't form sentences on this podcast. So like, imagine what I am doing, talking to celebrities <laughs> and having to memorize all this stuff about them. We get invited to not have Clever on the Teen Choice Awards carpet. We are hosting the Teen Choice Awards carpet for the Teen Choice Awards. That was my first carpet it was live and it was in virtual reality wait <laughs> do you know who fuck? one of the people i interviewed was marshmallow marshmallow doesn't talk he he doesn't talk i thought he just had the mask he didn't talk either honestly i am 50 50 which is the most annoying part i'm not reliably horrible in public situations but i can be 50 percent of the time which is very frustrating <laughs> Russian roulette. It's like, should I take this opportunity? It could go really good. It could also ruin my life. Red carpets are from the devil and I will stand by that. And if you've seen my red carpet story time, no, you didn't. Okay, because that is just the worst time of my entire fucking life. My Ant-Man outfit. Oh my God, I would rather die. Oh, you're talking about when you were like walking the red carpet. With my Coachella headband, yes. I just am upset because I remember that day and I'm like, oh, my brother let me leave the house like that. Can, can I tell you one other quick little tangent about a red carpet? Yes, you can. For a while, Clever, when we were part of Defy as the parent company, we basically had a PR firm that would rep the whole company. Isn't it funny how unofficial we are in comparison to that? Literally, I'm like, I look back at stuff I used to do and I'm like, oh. 
Now look at me. <laughs> no, so we would get the opportunity to go to a lot of movie premieres. A lot of the time we would just go to the premiere, walk the carpet, take pictures, and then we'd leave. Because honestly, it's not really comfortable to sit in a theater in like a red carpet outfit to begin with. And it was also movies that we didn't necessarily want to watch. So one of them, for example, was, it was a Power Rangers movie. I don't know it, it, when that happened or- I can't help you there, I don't know. I didn't see it. But um, before we get ready, we'd always be working all day. And then we'd have to just like go straight from work to the thing. But we had a lot of clothes and stuff in the office and Jocelyn always had like any it's like Jocelyn I need something to wear and she'd like literally dress you for a year she specifically for this one gives me she has this bag and she's like oh perfect I have these Power Rangers shirts that this company just sent me we should wear those so I have nothing else to wear and I'm like fuck fine so I wear like a weird Power Rangers shirt and like a tight skirt. So it was like a casual shirt tucked in and it on, it, it looked pretty bad. I was gonna say. Why do I feel like I've seen this photo? Because it was in a magazine in between Gigi Hadid and <laughs> Ashley Benson. See, isn't that the most humiliating bullshit yes! they could ever do to us? <laughs> it's like one of these things is not like the other. They nominated me in People in Espanol for one of the most beautiful people of the year. And what? one of these things was not like the other. One of these things was not like the well, fucking other you bitch. got nominated. Mine was because the PR company that gave Jocelyn the shirts then pitched the like article to them because they were wearing the Power Rangers shirts too. Guess who didn't look very good? Can you remember off the top of your head what my Ant-Man outfit looks like? Because if not, I'm pulling it up. With the Coachella headband? Yeah. It wasn't like a white dress? It was and it's from Target. Oh my God, I was right. Oh my God, my favorite part was when I went to the Divergent movie premiere and they were literally shouting at me. I was one of the first people on it. I think they thought I was in the movie. I was not. And they were like, who are you wearing? Who are you wearing? I'm like, Forever 21. Ah! Hold on. Oh my God. Yeah. I, that literally, I have a very visual memory. That was, that's burned in my. I thought it was a tan headband. It was so funny. I can also see your body layer. Like your, is your fist clenched on the bottom on your right? Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. <laughs> yeah. Literally, I feel like you're just like, like straight like a board. Okay. Because literally we showed up late and I was right after Paul Rudd and Julia, the one that's in 13 going on 30. There's a non-important hour. Yeah, yeah. You need to show up in that time because that's before the important people come. It's the extra tickets they gave to influencers. So then they have to promote it. And I was late. And for some reason, I still walked that god awful carpet with that sunflower headband i mean it is literally like night sweats still currently so anyway. honestly the power rangers one was such an unfortunate like i did i barely had any makeup on like i have eyebrows and that is it you know what's so funny is that i didn't realize until i was looking recently we are this is the tangent episode i'm so sorry yeah. but i didn't realize until recently that i would mix business casual with my fashion far too often i mean i'm talking like blazers things that like that didn't belong there see and this isn't something i would do normally i feel like i had relatively good outfits and i'll tell you where they were from in a second this was because jocelyn made me wear the fucking shirt and then the fact that it ended like with heels oh my god not I, the feet crossing i want to die i hate it i take it off take it off take it off look up pitch perfect it's like some of them I would go because then they post them all on Getty and I'd look after and I'm like, oh, that looks good. Like, I like those. And then some of them it was like, oh, oh, my God, you will never believe. Did you just hear like a lull in our yeah. conversation right now? There's a ghost in the room. What? My friends on Fortnite always imitate Teresa Caputo. And it's like, there's a present stepping forward. <laughs> but there's a present stepping forward because my phone just by itself three way called Nikocado Avocado. <laughs> I'm not joking. Did he answer? No, he didn't got sent to voicemail and apparently he hasn't set that up yet, so. Interesting times. Well, wow. <laughs> haven't heard that name in a while. Is he still making content? I don't know, hope he's fine. Anyway, anyway <laughs> got my outfits from Fashion Q and honestly used to get so many compliments. And I'm like, thanks, it was $10. <laughs> Point is red carpets are what nightmares are made of and every like anxiety ridden thing you could think of is present on the red carpet. It is hustle, it is bustle, but mainly it is people who only give a fuck if you are relevant. Like even if you might be relevant, you're gonna feel irrelevant on that carpet. Like it is just like awful. And the thing is Tana is relevant but that's not why like that's not even the part she can't do she just doesn't want to like host things where it's like super scripted and like you're on the spot exactly. i can relate to that because literally after the teen choice awards thing jocelyn and i always joke like i actually just saw this i was looking at old pictures and there was a comment where she was like your first and last red carpet and i was like yep i checked that one off the list and moved on i have not been to a movie premiere since ant-man i banned them from that point forward and that was years and years it's ago. like it, when something makes you that viscerally uncomfortable you try to avoid well it. and when when I got to my seat, they were doing like, what are the stars wearing? And it was, they showed me. Your star. And that was enough to make me want to unalive myself. But anyway, wow. Normally we pause for a second. That might've been 20 minutes. Anyway, back to what Tana was saying. We're almost done. If I see him now, we don't hate each other. And I was just trying to make jokes like I would make at a canceled show. 
Like, oh, I'm wearing his fucking eyeliner today because Alexis did my makeup with it, you know? But like, just, it just wasn't hitting like, like it normally so would. Yeah. <laughs> epically, epically failed. And I want to say that. And I'm, Ethan after and Hila after were like, you did amazing. Like, we love you. Thank you so much. I don't know if they were just saying well, that. They, uh, yes, they were. <laughs> yeah, if, if anything, I, I was, I'm happy to give a spectacle and whatever, but it just, I knew walking out onto that. Site. Honestly, one thing that I know about Ethan is I don't feel like he gives a shit if it's good press, bad press in a situation like this. He's going to love it regardless because it's drumming up conversation around his show. But anyway, that was the gist of Tana apologizing. My takeaway is that there's no way that that was just two shots. There was something else. Either she had more than that or she accidentally or purposely. I don't know. I don't really, not my place to say, but there's something else going on. I agree with that. And ultimately, I think where I stood and I still stand is like, it was embarrassing for her. Like, this isn't going to keep me up at night. There are topics we cover that genuinely like sit with us and are very heavy and are situations that we're like, oh my God, this was fucking like just awful to talk through. That was just like, okay, this is extremely cringe. She's embarrassing. I think also like when we get more passionate about certain topics, it's because there's behavior that we feel like needs to be like, that needs to stop. But I don't feel like this is behavior that she's trying to continue to do. It seemed like a mistake. I think that's what it was. Like we knew that this was going to happen. She was going to come out after and it doesn't make it right that it happened in the first place, but it makes it so that it's like, okay, at least this person realizes that what they did was incredibly embarrassing. They don't want to repeat it. They understand they're not good at it. She's not coming out like deaf noodles and being like, I'm the best comedian ever. Like that is even why we went so hard on him. If he had never done Literally. that, we wouldn't have said as much as we did. Speaking of repeated behavior, because this next topic that we're going to talk about does have to do with some sort of like pattern here, uh -huh, uh -huh. an interesting pattern. Although I won't say it's not terribly offensive to me because I don't have to be in the vicinity of it. Oh, it's not offensive to me. It's concerning. So Alex Earl. Now we've never spoken about Alex Earl on this podcast. We haven't ever talked about her before because one, I don't think there's ever been anything particularly problematic. Nothing has really seemed that important to talk about. This isn't important, it's just like weird. The thing with Alex Earl, I think for us and why we don't watch, like, cause I don't watch any, I mean, I don't really use TikTok that much to begin with, but we don't watch her content because a couple things. One, isn't she like 20, how old is she, 23? Oh my God, you were right on the money, 23. Really? And I'm 33 <laughs> and Jesse's 30. We, Allegedly. I think even like when we first became friends, Jesse and I, our friendship began because one, we both just enjoy doing nothing and sitting and getting drunk and talking, which is really why this podcast works and out so pizza. well. And eating pizza. Don't forget lots about eating pizza, pizza and listening pizza. to Adele. Oh, Adele. And Grace and Chance. She'd come film cheat day and then we'd go to my apartment, which was like a mile away. And we would get like blacked out just sitting on my couch, like yeah. watching YouTube videos and talking for like the whole night. And then she'd sleep over. We both liked drinking, but we didn't like going out to drink. We just liked being comfy and drinking. 100%. In college, I went out all the time. I was a big partier. So I think if I'd been in college and TikTok was the thing, I would probably be more interested in what Alex Earl is doing. But right now I don't get drunk ever. So like, I think that when we were drinking a lot, I was legitimately 21 years old. Like I had just turned 21. Obviously I drank before I was 21. Arrest me, officer. I'm sorry. But I definitely never drank with you when you were underage. <laughs> no, you, di you didn't. You know, by the time I moved to LA, literally the first summer I moved to LA before I met you, I turned 21 years old. And from that period on to like a year after that, I was definitely like going out, trying to experience being 21. Bitch, I had a child by 24. Like it was not a very long period of time. I even, you can see some story times on my channel that when I was like interning at Clever... <laughs> The first time I ever met Megan, the night before I locked myself out of my apartment, gotten so drunk that my friend who was like six feet tall boosted me on her shoulders to try and climb through a second story window. And I fell <laughs> off and fell down a flight of stairs. I could have, literally I could have Me died. asking, are you okay? That was like 12 years ago. <laughs> Honestly, probably why my back is so fucked up. <laughs> no, it was like so bad that I like didn't tell my mom for like weeks because I knew she would be so mad. But I literally met Megan the next day and I like wore like long, like a sweatshirt and pants and I was like so bruised. and. She she was like, are you okay? And I'm like, do you have any Advil? Honestly, what's so funny is like, I remember, I think back to the first day I met you and it was like, honestly, it was just like seeing someone that I already knew. And it's like, hey, what's up? Let's do this. Like, it was just like, you're very much that person. I feel like for a lot of people. Megan has never been a big drinker. I Like in high school she did, but like when I've been friends with her, she's never drank. You know when like people don't drink or they don't smoke and they're like super judgy of you? Mm -hmm. I've never had anyone be so like, yeah, do you want to just smoke on the balcony? Like I would bring my bong to her house and she wouldn't smoke and she'd just be like totally fine with me doing it. And I think hey, other hey, people- Hey, you also brought your bong to my house. Well, yeah, but you would smoke sometimes. <laughs> 
Like, (laughs) she was just like, oh, do you you need to take a smoke break? Like, it was very accommodating of it. And I think even with other people, maybe she wasn't. But she's like, well, you're like the same now. So yeah, exactly. You were always the same. My biggest frustration with Lily is that she would she would leave my house like a kid at a sleepover who's calling his mom and be like, mom, pick me up. I'll be like, bitch, why are you leaving my house at six in the morning? She's like, I just want to be in bed. I'm like, she can't literally you'd say you're like, you're like a guy that's leaving me in the morning. (laughs) I would wake up at six in the morning. I would see Lily either on the balcony or she was gone. Already at Because I'd wake up and I was really hungover and I would smoke and then I would just be like awake and anxious and like kind of needing to throw up and kind of not. And then you would sleep until one. So I'm like, well, I'm going to just go. And I also snore. So I understand the elements that surrounded us. Fuck ton. And what's interesting about this topic that we're going to (laughs) cover is that this is a person, Alex Earl in particular. I mean, literally her podcast is called Hot Mess with Alex Earl, I think. And she is known for that. Yeah, she's gotten a lot of shit for it actually in the past too, because she did an apartment tour, I guess, one time. And there's like something like a little cockroach, what is it? I've got it right here. Perfect. Before you even click it. So people basically saw this and like other stuff she would post. And they said that she was like glamorizing alcoholism and like addiction and being a slob and stuff. Oh my God. Which to that, I was like, that's a little harsh. She's in college. I was like, if you saw my apartment, sometimes when people would visit, like I had these four guy friends that would come from Santa Barbara and stay with us. Like they would leave and I'm like, oh God, what happened? But like we would clean it. I would clean my room like once a month maybe, but like I would. She seems to not have that timeline. And here's the thing. I'm not super quick to judge people who are quote unquote unhygienic because number one, it doesn't affect me. And number two, it could mean a slew of different things. Like it could be a thousand different reasons why that person is experiencing that particular situation. Just especially in college and as someone that is not like, I'm not a clean freak at all. (laughs) Sometimes stuff gets gross, but like it's a little past gross. We're going to talk about some situations that I have to question. It's like, well, did we need to share that? Yeah. I mean, maybe we did. I don't know. Maybe we did. But I just personally believe maybe some things should be, you know, kept in the draft. Yeah. And I think I like didn't defend her before, but I thought it was a little like glamorizing stuff is a bit far. She's just showing what she is doing yeah we're gonna watch it now i don't even think it's that bad and honestly in times that i've experienced some of the most like depression in my life my room has directly reflected that like there were times where i would literally shove everything to a side of the bed and sleep in like balled up i'm not diagnosing her i don't know anything about her mental health but based on just how much she like was going out and partying and doing like things that she seemed to be enjoying i don't think it was necessarily a mental health situation she just was like not didn't have time yeah that's <laughs> and to me honestly i was it. like she's just partying a lot and that's not a priority and like i get it honestly when you think of how much time it takes to intentionally clean something and to keep it clean that takes a lot of your time and if you're not home your place is gonna look like shit i'm not defending her roach hotel or whatever no no no, no, no. but like if it was just like clothes on the bed or like not doing laundry yeah me same this is a little bit like ooh, maybe you don't share that yes i agree but honestly when i saw this i didn't even think it was that bad don't come for me the tour we have all been waiting for welcome to casa amor so first off we have casa cucaracha we get a lot of cockroaches so we just made a little house for them our chip bag clips are also cockroach themed (laughs) our fish elton my ramen noodles this is our living area Drinks, Starbucks. I can golf. insert a photo here of my dorm room. Oh my God. I'll just tell you right now. I got a random suite mate that we became like best friends. And so she had the room next to mine, but then her roommate was never there. And then my roommate like basically didn't live there at all. So what we would do is we would often um, alternate rooms. So we would just trash one of them. And then when it got too gross to be in, we would just leave it and then go in the other room. But then when they would both get dirty, then we'd clean both usually. And then we'd start over. So it was like a cycle. That is the most bizarre thing I've ever heard. Just like I like to have people over and drink like on my couch. We always loved to have the pregames because then we didn't have to leave until we were actually going out. So if you had the pregames, it's everyone else leaving their mess there too. So it's not just you. It's like a tornado goes through and then you wake up in the morning and you're like, fuck. Or you're hungover and you don't want to clean. So then we would go in the other room and then I'm, that's... I mean, efficient, but definitely concerning. I feel like I'm a person that I can deal with mess, especially like I have kids. I've had to deal with mess and like I have been messy in the past. I feel like now if I didn't have kids, I would be so much more organized and so much more efficient because I'm much more intentional at this point in my life. But for many moons, I just kind of like dealt with it. I didn't really care. Sometimes it reflected my mental health. Sometimes it was literally just me like going out, doing shit. I didn't give a fuck. I wasn't home often. When you have a priority list, and you're doing a lot of stuff, 
And if you're not home a lot and you're not looking at it, then it's like, that's not high on the priority list. Exactly. And I have seen, you know, situations where there is a ton of food and crazy shit left out. This doesn't even seem like that, but we'll keep going. I just don't even see like a situation where they caused the cockroaches. It might just have been like a thing they had to yeah, deal no, with. Yeah, no, that isn't as gross as I remember it. I think people have just talked about it being gross. But genuinely, I Agreed. like I've lived in far worse conditions than this. Not you being canceled in this episode. Clubs. So this room was not a bedroom, but we made it into one. So we just bought these doors, but they don't fit <laughs> over the space. Here we just have like a lot of packages. This is our laundry room that also doubles as storage. It's also Kristen's art studio in here. This is just what like most of our floors look like. This is my bathroom that I share with Kristen. Our rooms connect. Toilet is like a children's toilet, so it's like right on the ground, and this like doesn't. Have you seen the fraternity toilets on TikTok? It's enough to haunt you I've, in your I've dreams. I've seen them in real life. Girl, I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. This toilet's clean. Everything looks clean. It's messy as fuck. It's cluttered as fuck. Who cares? I remember seeing this at the time and being like, oh. But this is bad. It doesn't necessarily seem dirty. It seems messy. By the time I was a junior and senior, my roommates, if it had just been two of us, it probably would have gotten pretty messy. But we had a third roommate that was like, mom's gonna get mad. So my mess was confined to my room. That is so funny that you mentioned that because now what we're gonna continue to watch from Alex Earl is an example of not just like young 20 something year olds just like living their life. I feel like it's a little bit beyond that, just a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit more unhinged than I remember my 20 somethings to be. I went to Arizona State, which is known as a very big party school. And I partied with a lot of people that really love to party. I've talked about, I got like allergic to hard alcohol and couldn't drink it anymore without getting violently ill like halfway through sophomore year my drinking was always kind of iffy so i wasn't someone that necessarily was like staying out till 4 a.m and like needing to stay part like i was needing to go home because i didn't feel good and i wanted pizza i can't relate to this but like i can't think of one person that i was friends with that could relate to this and i was friends with people that would party through like we're all for the puke and rally this is not that no I'm not. I'm not even As long that. as you're not like, if it's not like on you. Like I've thrown up, I just said, I'm like, I've thrown up in a frat before. Threw up, felt better. Then I'm good to go. Can take more shots. I've never been that person. If I throw up, you need to like, see you tomorrow. Give me a pillow. I'm going to sleep. Oh, here. see, no, I was pull the trigger and then we're good to go. Here's my thing. I have always, and I mean, even in my sloppy, if you've been on my main channel and you've seen my story times, like even in my sloppiest era of high school, Jesse, where yes, I shouldn't have been drinking. I was underage, but I did. I'm sorry. But even in my sloppy era, I was always the mom of the group. I was always the most annoying. I was always the most concerned about our safety. I was always the most concerned about everything. It does quite seem like Alex Rolls does not know anyone who is the mom of the group. It is just a bunch of children of the group. Okay, well, that's like, another just... thing I said to Angelica. I was like, is she like alone in these situations? Because like, I can think of like bringing my roommate home when she was getting sick. But even still, like this didn't happen. You don't understand. So I watched through their entire Halloween podcast. It was her and her friend who were discussing their Halloweens that they experienced in Key West. Mind you, I'm born and raised in Miami. I never went to Key West for Halloween ever. I never even heard that that was a thing. Apparently there's like a fantasy festival or something of the sort where there's a bunch of swingers that go and it's like a bunch of like older people butt naked and whatever, live your life, you know, live your truth. But it's her and a bunch of fucking people similar to her because again, there's no mob of the group. And she literally describes it as the most unhinged, borderline dangerous. Alex Earl is saying she's on yachts, like random people's yachts. Her friend literally woke up like she fell asleep. She thought they were going home She woke up in a parking lot with her phone dead She was sweating bullets in a jeep with the top off and like her friends were gone See that's the thing. It's like everyone had bad nights, but someone always would make sure you would go home my friends especially like miami cuban people i don't know if it's just us but like my friends did not play my friend amanda would literally say you don't get out of my sight like you're not gonna fucking like leave with some random fucking person you don't if you're gonna go to the bathroom you tell me you're gonna go to the bathroom like those are the friends that i knew were friends that really watched out for each other so i can't even fathom this again i know they're in miami and they're in key west they're not from miami they're very obviously not from miami but even in a less like from a less compassionate um standpoint like our friends like if you were being a slob it was like you need to go home you're being embarrassing and you're like dragging us down you need to leave it wasn't just like 
yeah, have fun, bye. No, 100%, but I'm saying more even from the aspect of like Alex Earl would say, I ended up on a yacht. She literally said that. She's like, I don't even know what yacht. I just ended up on someone's yacht. You could have died. I would say that we, that kind of stuff happened to us, but not alone. If I was with you, I would have killed you. Like if you didn't die in that circumstance, I would have killed you. Spring break in Cabo one year, there was like, eight of us and we were drinking at mango deck if you know you know and a group of guys so maybe three guys came up to us and they were like hey girls want to come on our yacht and literally when i tell you we all looked around and they were like there's eight of us what are they gonna do oh here's a picture of God. us on the yacht lily it went i literally went fine would have tackled you okay so guys have always hated me for that reason i would have been the one bitch in that group i would have said excuse me sir who are you who are your parents why the fuck are you asking like what are your intentions with us like it depended no, on the you. night or the day this was during the day but honestly this ended up being a very fun time and it was great okay i'm happy for you but you also could have literally not no, been here I, with us right now at this that, moment yes but that's kind of what alex earl was saying she's like you know i ended up on a yacht and they're very much describing it as this like haha it's very like a yes man situation. Yeah, well, Alex Earl literally says the sentence, you could have died when her friend said that she woke up in the Jeep and she was like, where the fuck is everyone? My phone is dead. Like, yeah, there are circumstances where people could have died. And it very much seems like there is no mom of the group. That's what I'm trying to say. It's like, please go to Miami. You guys are already in Miami, aren't you? Find your local Cuban bitch who will let you in her group. She will take care of you. She will make sure that you get home. She will make sure that you like are not out of her sight because this is concerning. Well, yeah, because I think of even like most of the times we were getting drunk with people from ASU. I feel like Miami is a little different because it's like college environment, but then like mixed with an older party environment where you are kind of getting out of the college environment, but you're college drunk. Well, and honestly, why I was so shocked to hear that she went to Key West for Halloween, and I guess there is a swinger festival that goes on every year at Halloween, is because Key West is so secluded. Like, I mean, just the bridge alone that you have to take to Key West is so fucking long. And then you finally get there. It is only specific people who live there on that island. It is not like this super populated thing at all. Like, what's the plan to get home? Well, that's the thing is that they usually sleep there for a couple of days. They say like, oh, it's 48 hours of fun. And like you go to sleep at 4 a.m., you wake up at 8 a.m. for the next day. I have to like be very transparent. I have never been that bitch. If I don't get my sleep, we're gonna have an issue. I'm the one that's always trying to go home at some point because usually I would not feel I that know, in. you tried to leave my house several times. That's different. I was leaving in the morning. <laughs> I was always one of the ones that went home early. Like if people want to stay out till four, that's, that's not me. Like Vegas was always very hard for me. <laughs> okay, Vegas has always been hard for me too. It'll be like 2 a.m. in the club and I'm like, bitch, yeah, no, let's that's go the, home. I, I mean, drugs are required for Vegas. <laughs> okay, that's what I'm thinking is I'm like, is there something yes. else involved no, here? They're anyway, for sure oh my God, we are going on so many tangents. But the reason we're even discussing this is because she had a whole segment or really her whole podcast episode was dedicated to her and her friend talking about how they do Key West Halloween specials. I love that we haven't know. gotten to the actual topic. <laughs> we are just chatterboxes today. But anyway, so here's where we get to the nitty gritty, the part where everyone's talking about where Alex Earl was dressed up as Madonna for Halloween. And she wants to just give you a little bit more info on the ins and outs of the execution of that costume. So they didn't want to let us go upstairs to the bathroom, but mind you, in this Madonna costume, I was strapped up, belted up, Spanx tights, like 10 layers, like there was no going to the bathroom for Madonna. So I was like, fine, I don't need to pee, like I'll hold it in. For somehow, I, uh, my brain, for some reason, I didn't actually end up having to pee the whole entire night, but... When we got to this apartment, I was like, you know what? It's time for me to pee. Of course, it's like Alex, like everyone's going home in an hour, like just hold it in. No. So we go to the bathroom. After fighting our way to get up there, the security was like, no. And I was like, I need to go. Being the smart person that I am, I was like, you know what? Because usually when you're wearing a bodysuit, you can like scoot it over to the side so you can like pee. But I had Spanx and tights on under this bodysuit. But I was like, you know what? I'm going to move the bodysuit over to the left of my vagina. <laughs> and I'm just going to pee through the Spanx and the tights. Like, that's fine with me. So I sat on the toilet. I peed. And I don't think I could, like, fully move the bottom part of the bodysuit over because, like, it was so tight. We need to take a quick pause. P quick pause I because just to she did make it to a toilet there could have been preventative measures <laughs> yeah no i just am like i get that it was hard to take off i guess but like 
the fact that you would just be like, ah, it's too hard. I'm just going to go through it. I might lose some people with this, but I personally, when I'm wearing bodysuits, I, I take it will, off. yeah, I can't move it over because the chance that there's going to be piss all yeah, over your no, bodysuit. No, no, yeah. A vagina is quite the unexpected spray, some could say. I've never been a pull to the side person. I'm topless okay, in the bathroom. Okay, same. I'm glad that you're that person because I am also that person. And the fact that she's like, well, I'll just move one layer of my three layers out of the way and I'll just piss. Also, like, I definitely wasn't wearing Halloween costumes that required like three, like, they're dressing much different than me and my friends dress. <laughs> that would have been like my reason to not wear that costume because I would have already in my head been like, how am I going to pee? Okay, agreed. But I've been in situations where I have worn Spanx and also other outfits. I mean, I haven't worn three layers, but okay, I'll say like two layers maybe. And I always take all of them off. Same, like, even yeah. if I have to be butt naked, my tits are out in the bathroom. Like, it's like whatever. Or I've also had um like romper situations on where yeah, like I couldn't worst. hook it again. Like I needed someone to come with me to be able to put it back on. But I, that's what I did. Unfortunately, it actually gets worse. Like it was so tight. So I just peed through my Madonna costume in the toilet. <laughs> and I guess I got my period because <laughs> not like a lot of blood, but a little bit of blood. So this is like where everything gets really dark. I'm walking already. around this party. Oh like oh I oh was like <gasps> limp, like ooh, like crazy eyes, whatever. We're outside and Sally's taking a video of me. I'm standing here. I think she's taking a video because I'm like, I can't walk and I'm tripping. All of a sudden, she's like, Alex, did you get your period? On the bottom of my costume is blood. And <laughs> I... It's because I peed through the costume that the pee like soaked up everywhere and it took the blood and just it just spread. So like the whole bottom part of the vagina of this costume was covered in blood and I was walking around with my blood on my costume i i like would not be opposed to like going to the hospital okay what i don't know what that last line was about i have to say her friend in the front of the bed and in the middle of the bed y'all should be ashamed of yourselves y'all are some real not real ones because the one on the right at least is reacting somewhat the other ones look like they're about to fall asleep she's letting you know she bled and pissed through her halloween costume i'm gonna need you to perk up this uh girly you lost me you lost me because here's the thing we have spoken about our own periods on multiple occasions on the show you know we've got them i honestly believe it's like okay as a woman we're not gonna hide that we have our periods there's nothing to hide about it i despise when male family members members are like oh god you're bleeding from there again yeah bitch it happens every fucking four weeks the thing is is like we all get our period there's nothing to be ashamed of and also a lot of women stain every time we'll get our period we've had our periods yeah. for how many fucking years and we'll still stain our clothes because everyone it's has kind of unexpected uh, period underwear yeah literally that's a period outfit though this is a little bit different because it's not only that you're admitting that you piss through two layers of your clothes which it's like just the absolute like feeling i know you felt like you were sitting in a diaper i know it like for a fact if i was like so drunk that i was like didn't even realize that that had happened but i literally had just like chosen to pee like someone would have taken me out i mean she chose to do it it wasn't necessarily an accident but that makes it weirder and that's the thing is like i have never peed myself in public i have ripped my pants but that's not even comparable but what i have done is in new orleans for instance me and my friend leslie we did pee in an alleyway but like we fully were sitting Included from everyone. I mean, all the bathrooms were so crowded. We had to pee so bad. That's not even remotely the same. She went to a bathroom and then still peed through her clothes. There was toilet paper available to you and you were still yeah, moist what afterwards. is going on? We've got a problem. And then all of a sudden, life decided to strike you in the ass and you got your period as well. I mean, that's just a series of unfortunate events. How tight could the Spanx have been that that was what the best option was? I would have literally, like, t if I had a latex, you know those, like, latex Kim Kardashian, like, bodysuits? I would have had someone peel that off of me because yeah to sit and piss is a punishment i think literally a form of torture in some countries not to mention especially when you're drinking a lot like i mean i guess it depends on what you're drinking but like maybe she's dehydrated would it smell like i just there's so many gross this is a hygiene oh, interesting situation. uh point that you brought up there with the smell because the next thing that we have to discuss is the throw up dress because that just recently hit the market you know sometimes like if you're drunk and you like for example if something like a drink spilled on you or something and it's like torture the beginning of the night and you're kind of just like whatever what am i gonna do and you just deal with it for the night she took that though 
to like times 10. She just, I think, is comfortable in moisture is what I'm gathering. You know what freaked me out is that I heard somewhere, and this could be completely incorrect, and I just believed it because maybe I saw it on TikTok, that we don't feel moisture as humans. We just feel cold. So like when the cold or the air hits the moisture. Maybe it was a hot night out is what I'm getting at. I don't know if that's entirely true, but sure. Fact check me in the comments. The concern here is that like she's getting fucked up enough that she doesn't care. But honestly, it might be more of what you said and she might not care. She doesn't seem very phased by it sober. I would be mortified if I was like, I was so drunk that I was okay with that. What? Yeah. That's not what her perspective is. No, she's very chill and her friends are like, yeah, I remember that time you bled and pissed through your leotard. No problem. Yeah, and like everyone has a bad night, but it seems like that was a normal one. Exactly. And that's what I was getting at in their earlier explanations of Key West and how every year they go there and it's the most unhinged, like literally she says we black out and it's just this crazy thing that the next day or the weekend that we wake up and we have to go home. We're just like, what the fuck even happened? I'm like, I can't relate to that. Like I've had moments of that in my life. That's not my normal. See, and I can relate to it, but I also am a really composed blackout. So I'm not peeing through my clothes. You are? I've experienced that myself. Anyway, so this is the throw up dress drama that's got everyone uh, losing it currently. I'm glad no one go near this, this one because this I meant to throw out, it smells, it has my puke on it for my birthday last year. And I meant to get it dry clean, but I didn't. So it's just been sitting in my closet. Up uh, against your other clothes? And it really smells, smell it. Ew, ew. <laughs> the way that I would literally like, because I'm so terrified of throw up, that if someone did that to me, I would punch them square in the face like this. So I'll say right now, and I've been very open about this. I've thrown up a lot in my day <laughs> because of my struggle, not because I was drinking too much. I literally could take one shot. I would be throwing up for hours. I've definitely experienced a lot of throwing up and doing it while I'm out. And like I said, like I've puked and rallied, like I had to go to the bathroom, threw up the shot that went down bad. And then I kept drinking and I was fine. But I'm also very stealthy about my throwing up. So I definitely, I mean, I'm sure this happened a couple times, but like then someone's taking me home. Like I was never throwing up on myself. I was running outside or, and throwing up or like going to a bathroom and doing it. I was never doing it like on the front of my dress. And I certainly wouldn't keep the dress. I think that there's differences here for sure because I'm also very similar. And the only times that I've ever thrown up like uncontrollably was still like outside of a car. Like I need to get outside of the car on the floor. Like I'm never someone that's gonna I've throw up on like, myself. I've out, out of a moving car out the window before. I think we all have. My friend has thrown up like in a purse in the car. Like I, I've definitely been around a lot of throw up but not on yourself. The fact that she did it isn't the problem for me. It's that she kept it. And she's like, oh, I was gonna dry clean it. Throw it away. And not only did she keep it, but people were pointing out, like this one person commented, ma'am, you moved apartments with this. So she actually moved <gasps> locations. And she said, I did. You're talking about if I even get the glimpse of the smell of vomit, it is enough to send me into a spiral. This woman had it up against her other clothes, moved houses with it. So when you move houses, you have to gather all your clothes. You're gonna catch a whiff of that. You're gonna see it. Like, I feel like if you move, you see everything everything that you own and you kind of like go through it and see what you actually need, what you don't need. I mean, the way she was reacting to it, it seemed like a pungent smell. Why would you hang it up? Someone said you're too real for this, Al. That's what I don't like, honestly, because I feel like even every story time that like me personally, I've ever told about me being a sloppy drunk has been very much ashamed of like what I did or just being like, oh my God, I'm such a fucking disaster. Like I shouldn't have done that. I think that's the disconnect. It's that she's not exhibiting any kind of regret over it. She's like, thinks it's funny, which like maybe that's just like how she's, I don't know why you'd share it though. Like she's volunteering this information. Yeah, it just seems very nonchalant, kind of concerningly nonchalant, honestly, because it's like, yeah, you're a young 20 something year old, but still this is sloppy. Like again, the unhygienic thing is a totally separate thing in my opinion. It's like, some people are messy, get over it. Like who cares? But this in particular is like, girl, this is like, this is really bad. Say this was me. And I, for some reason felt compelled to keep a dress that I threw up on and forgot. I don't like, again, put it in a fucking trash bag or something. Like why is it hanging with your other clothes? But also then is this on her TikTok? Yeah. So she she's doing a closet tour that she's voluntarily doing. If I was then cleaning out my closet and I saw the puke dress, I would not grab it and be like, guess what happened for this? I would be like conveniently sliding it to the back and not bringing it up. I think that, that this comes kind of full circle because I do think the appeal of Alex Earl, even since the beginning, since the cockroach times has been, oh my God, a queen who is like conventionally beautiful, right? She's like a person that most people would look at and be like, oh, you're so attractive. But this 
this nasty shit is the thing that makes her relatable. And so she's like, oh, let me kind of like capitalize on that and be like, oh, finding my puke covered birthday dress from last year. It's like, e no. One of the other issues might be because like this isn't relatable. I would no. venture to say to 99% of people, they don't find this relatable. No one would do this. As a slob who threw up a lot, it's going in the trash. Like I'm not even going to dry clean it because I'm too embarrassed to bring it to the dry cleaner. I'm throwing it away. The fact that she kept it, hung it up, moved apartments apparently, and then pulled it out to be like part of the story time because she's like, she knows that's her brand. Like, I don't know if she has like a disconnect with like what she should be sharing and like what's appropriate to share because she's so popular. No, she's very aware, I think, of what she's doing. I think she knows people are going to talk about this and she likes that. And ultimately, everything else I've looked at, because I've always heard, again, people being like, you're my Alex Earl to even other creators where it's like someone that wouldn't be relatable, but they actually are relatable and you wouldn't think they'd be. I'm looking at all the other evidence that she's relatable and I'm just like, oh, so it's just that she's a little bit gross. <laughs> like, there's nothing else relatable about her. Her college experience, her hanging with her friends. She seems pretty privileged from all things considered. Like, I don't understand. But it's that you you look at her and you probably, you'd think like, she has like a really good skincare routine and she like takes good care of herself because she looks good. But it's like, then you see that she actually doesn't take good care of herself and that's actually just like- And she pisses through her leggings. And she like yeah. cleans up nice, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't know. And we're people that also- also drink. So this is coming from people who drink actively and who are, I guess, still a part of a drinking lifestyle. But I can see someone who's completely sober looking at this and being like, this should not be glorified. Like just straight up, this should not be yeah. a thing that we should be like, ha ha, amazing. Like I think even back to, again, my story times that I private all the time and people get annoyed at me with, I don't like to glamorize high school Jesse who would drink and be a slob and a bitch to people. I don't like that. And I think that this is also glamorizing being drunk and un aware and blacked out. And I don't think that there's anything funny about that necessarily, especially when it comes to your safety, which again, they compromise regularly, it seems from the stories they tell and your general like autonomy and you not aware of your own body and like anything that's happening, you're throwing up on yourself. <laughs> when you put it like that, I get that. And I definitely like, as I get older, I'm like, I can't believe I did that when I was younger. But at the same time, I very much can relate to being like, Oh yeah, we like went out to get fucked up. We got super drunk. That was the goal. And like we did. I don't think she's actively like, I think it maybe, yeah, it's, it could be considered irresponsible and glamorizing it. I don't think that she's trying to do that. I don't do think that. so either. I think she's in her 20s and I get it. It's just this hygiene aspect of it. It's just a step too far. Yeah, I agree that I don't think that's what she's trying to do, but I do think that is what she is doing. And again, I think that's what I did in my story time era. I'm not even saying that I'm not guilty of the same thing. I think that when you're in the moment and people are hyping you up and saying, real queen, relatable, oh my God, you're like, well, fuck, I got a ton of these stories because we're fucking hot messes. When everyone around you is doing that too. So it's like, we didn't even have Instagram. Like we had Instagram senior year of college. And it was like, people posted like pictures of like the sunset. Like it wasn't like there weren't stories. Fuck no. I would be mortified now to like look back if I had that kind of footage. So I think it's crazy that she's in college living how I was going out, but like 10 times more. And she also has millions of followers. That's, that's like That's the a thing nightmare. that's concerning to me is like, you're not just being a hot mess on the internet and you're not telling stories of the past. You're living this currently. <laughs> so that's a little bit more troubling. But at the same time, all I can say is like, there is no need to idolize anyone, not ourselves, not any influencer that you've ever seen in your life. They may not and probably are not exactly what you believe them to be. And this situation of like idolizing her real queen. Oh my God, this and that. I don't get that. And the whole like, you're my Alex Earl. I just, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I think we can't relate though, because it's like, we wouldn't idolize that. But I do a lot get of people like, do. well, and I think a lot younger people that like wish they were living that kind of lifestyle because they maybe have had a taste of it. And they're like, yeah, I wish I could do that all the time. Or I wish that me and my friends did that because they maybe don't have a Or even worse, or it might encourage people who are not as privileged as far as like financially like she now is because she is an influencer now. I'm not saying she always was, but now she is and she's still posting this type of content. It might encourage people to exhibit that type of lifestyle as well and like expose it and be like, oh, this is me. This yeah. is look at my fucked up house and look at me getting drunk on the weekend. Like it's just not the best example to set. I don't know that she realizes that now. Could she later on? Probably, yeah. And the thing is also, this isn't excusing it by any means, but at least I think where 
her head might be at is that she got her following from doing this. So it was right. like she was doing this before and then people were like, yeah, I like that content. I want to see more. So why would she suddenly be like, I'm a role model when that's not what she signed up for? And I know that even if you don't sign up for it, there's still a responsibility. But I at least get why she wouldn't recognize no, it. No, honestly, I get it. And I think that, again, I think I put up a lot of videos um, under the same pretenses where I was just like, oh, my God, everyone loves story times. And now I look back at them in horror and I'm like, oh, my God, I was a crazy bitch. Shouldn't have posted that. Whoops. And I hope that I didn't inspire other people to do story times, honestly, and like expose the most like dark moments of their life. Because what story times does and like what this does is it makes you go to the like the darkest parts of your brain and the parts where you're the most debaucherous and like worst version of yourself and possibly putting yourself in danger, honestly. And well, and in that. college, you're so desensitized to those situations because it is the norm. So you're just like, yeah, everyone, it's, it was fun. It was normal, I never went to college, like, so I can't relate. But well, yeah. and that's, I'm sure she'll get older and she'll be like, oh, I guess maybe that wasn't normal. Yeah, probably. But ultimately, ew. Am I right? That was kind of gross. I think it's, here's my my consensus is it's gross. I think it's uh, past the level of like you party too much. It's not even, I think as related to partying as it is just like. Even her sober self is rationalizing pissing through her leggings. So it's like. Yeah, that's, I just like don't, it was weird for me. I do think that it would be hard to have gotten a lot of followers when you're trying to just like have fun in college. And then suddenly people are like, why are you doing this? When you're like, this is what I always I get what you mean, yeah. That I think would be really unfortunate, but like also she's living a pretty nice life. So it's like, I don't know at what point you have to like transition be like, I don't know, again, I'm not excusing it, but I think it would be hard to kind of understand what your impact is having on What's people. interesting is that this episode was kind of two comparisons where we do experience someone else who was famous very young, who's Tana Mojo, who got famous for story times. And then we did witness a growth with her and then kind of a step back and everyone's like just completely pissed off and annoyed at this step back. And I think Alex Earl might experience a lot of the same things because it's like you got famous young, not as young as Tana, but pretty young. And for a lot of the same kind of like antics as her where it's just like you're a fucking hot mess and everyone loves it i met tana when she was 18 oh my god yeah all in all i think that everyone has their own road when they're an influencer you start at your own content i mean if i right now had to choose what content i started at it wouldn't have been what i started at especially not on vine like my fucking god i look at vine compilations kill me now like i cannot vine you even like you had to choose content to make she's just filming her life right her biggest thing was like get ready with me isn't yeah. it yeah, like yeah. she's not doing skits or like doing she's not putting on a show she's just showing what she's doing and then suddenly she had millions of followers and I think there's probably a disconnect with like the weight of that well the weight of it and also just like don't share everything yeah you could have left your puke covered uh dress you could put that straight in a trash bag I do think this was extremely intentional obviously it was she just posted this so she knows what it's gonna do but I think she might regret that later on anyway my god we have like if rambling was an My episode is sore from talking i believe it this episode was the embodiment of rambling so we will leave you alone i'm so sorry do you want to know what it is i think we've been so like wrapped up in everything going on i feel like we haven't had very many conversations and we just missed each other <laughs> i think that's what it is too i hope you guys enjoyed it especially if you're someone that likes our just banter back and forth i know when we have like long intros and we apologize for it people are like don't we love it so hopefully you do love it because that's like the was. egg tangent <laughs> oh god that was weird literally you guys left so many comments about that we were like are we egg influencers now? i think we are we should add that to our media docket for our brands but Anyway, we will leave you with that. Thank you guys so much. If you made it to the end, my God, this was a long one. So we appreciate you. And um, yeah, as always, we hope you have a great weekend and we will see you on Monday. And thanks again for donating to the GoFundMe. Thank GoFund you. Me. We love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.